Nephew. Yeah. How's everybody doing tonight? I don't want to turn it on. Sorry. I'll just turn it off. Yeah. How's everybody doing tonight? All right. It's good to see everybody here tonight. Um, yeah, it's been a while since I've done this. So my kids were speculating today on how long it had been and when they last heard me preach and, and everything. And I was like, I do not know. So one was like, it was in California before we, when we left there. And one was like, yeah, I don't even remember that. So anyway. <laughs> So tonight, I just want to talk to you a little bit about obstacles. If Robert, can you put that slide up on the screen? So obstacles. So when I first joined the Army, I went to see the recruiter and stuff. He was like, so what do you want to do? And I said, well, I want to drive tanks. And he said, well, that's cool. Hey, I've got this other really cool thing that you can do. It's called being a combat engineer. You can drive all kinds of different vehicles. You can do all kinds of different stuff. And I was like, that sounds pretty cool. Maybe I'll try that. And so, hence began my career in the Army as a combat engineer. So, combat engineer, what is a combat engineer? Well, we clear obstacles, that's what we did. Um, you can see the seance is, is our, was our motto. It's on our shield that was on our uniforms and stuff, the engineer castle. Then, you know, it's a French phrase that means let us try. And the officer motto of the of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. So let us try. So anytime there was something that nobody else could do, guess who they called? They called us. Um, we built bridges. Um, we built bridges out of steel. We built bridges out of just pontoons. We built bridges. Um, I had one on the back of my tank that I could lay across a sixty foot gap, and I could I could. Uh, tanks could go across on that. Also, on my tank, I had uh, at one point I had 3,500 pounds of C4 to clear a minefield. And so, anytime something needed to happen that needed to be cleared or needed to be blown up, they called us. They called the engineers. You know, so combat engineers. One of our other models is we clear the way. Um, we make sure that we can get through, and people and the arm are the the military can get make it through and stuff when desert storm whenever i was over over there uh before we crossed the border into iraq one of the things that there was was these huge berms they had built these huge berms right on the border these things were probably 20 30 feet high and so our guys that were in the dozers and stuff we had they had to go and they had to create paths going through all this stuff you know and then we came through and then we went through so we cleared the way for all that you know, we had to find ways to cross all these different obstacles. You know, one of the biggest obstacles that there is out there for any military is a river or some body of water. Um, you'll notice that a lot of times, you know, you'll you'll watch movies, war movies and stuff, and, oh, we got to figure out how to get across this body of water. You know, the bridge got blown up. We've got to be able to get across it. We've got to be able to do this. We've got to be able to do that, you know. And so it's a big obstacle in our, in our in, in the military, you know, whenever there's a defense or something like that, you know, but nothing would stand in our way. You know, we had different ways to get across that path, any way that we could. But water was the biggest obstacle when it came to moving an army around, around the, the place. And so what I want to talk to you about tonight is what obstacles are in your way? You know, what is stopping you from reaching your full potential? Now we're going to talk tonight, I'm going to talk about three events. And then I'm going to talk about some other water events that happen in the New Testament. But from the Old Testament, you know, everybody knows the story about the Jordan River and about Moses, you know, and then, you know, crossing, crossing the Red Sea and doing all that stuff. But later on in the book of Deuteronomy, when he turns over the, the, the reins to Joshua before he decides to cross over into the promised land after 40 years of wandering, there was this body of water, the Jordan River. And, you know, they had to get across. And one of the things that, that you know, as, as I was reading this, one of the things that happened was the priests, they went before with the Ark of the Covenant. The water hadn't, hadn't started parting yet. 
So here's these priests, they're walking into the water, you know, they're walking, and that's when the water starts to recede. This says it was blocked off, I don't know how many, like two or three kilometers up the river is where it was blocked. And so it started backing up up there. So you can imagine that the priests are like, well, I hope this is really going to work because I've got to get out into the middle of this water and everybody's following us across and hopefully this thing does. So I'm sure they're probably standing probably knee deep, waist deep, maybe up to their neck or something, holding the Ark of the Covenant going, man, I hope. But, you know, it says in the Bible, what happened? The water receded and the water dried out. I'm sure his little buddy dried out. Everybody walked across. Once they walked across, then here come the priest behind everybody with the Ark of the Covenant, and then here come all that water rushing back. Now, to me, you know, crossing a river like that, no thank you. You know, I, I it, it would be tough for me to think about, you know, having that kind of faith and saying, you know what? You want me to go and, and walk out there in the water and be like, all right, come on, Robert, come on, Ricky. Let's go. We're gonna we're gonna go out here. We're gonna stand in the water because God said He's gonna part the river part the river just for us. Come on. You know, uh, we're probably looking at each other going, mm, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> I can hear Robert now going, "I don't know about that," but you know what? We can we with God anything is possible. And so you know, as Joshua, I mean Joshua and Caleb, they came back from the Promised Land with all these stories. You know, of, of all this, this, all this big stuff that they could do. You know, with the other, other ten, they didn't think it was possible. But Joshua and Caleb did. The next one that happened at that same, around that same area, was Elijah crossing over the Jordan with Elisha. So when they, they you know, here Elisha was. He had, he burned his oxen tore all of his clothes off, did all kinds of stuff just to follow Elijah. And so here now he's following Elijah, and Elijah says, hey, we got to get across this river. Elijah's probably, Elisha's probably looking around going, okay, where's the boat? Where's the, where's the, the rocks? How am I going get, to get to where I need to go? He takes off, Elijah takes off his cloak, throws it out there in the water. Elisha probably is like, Holy cow, what did I get myself into? Gets across the river, and then all of a sudden, Elijah, Elijah's like, hey, Elisha, I got to go somewhere. Here comes a chariot of fire. This is all my, my translation, by the way. Here comes a chariot of fire down from heaven. All of a sudden, Elijah gets taken up into heaven, and his cloak falls down, and the water goes back in the Jordan, and Elisha's like, how am I going to get across? You know, there's a second... He got the he got the double portion off of Elijah from that. I mean, Elisha. I mean, <laughs> pick up the cloak and I mean, keep going. No, I don't know. Well, I guess if it worked for Elijah, maybe I need to try it myself. So he takes off the cloak and throws it across. River parts, and that's another another sign of God's power and clearing obstacles out of the way for people. The next one happens in the same area of the Jordan River. It's Jesus. Jesus is getting ready to start his ministry. He's 30 years old. He goes out to the river. His cousin is, is preaching the gospel. You know, and, and he walks up and, you know, I'm sure John, John the Baptist is going, you know, we grew up together. I know who you are. I know that you're the son of God. I'm not worthy to, to baptize you. You know, and here he is, he's going at the Jordan River, the same place where, around the same area where Joshua and the Israelites crossed over, around the same area that Elijah gave a double portion. And, and here they are. John is just standing there, probably like looking at him going, I don't, know, I don't know if I can do this, you know? But he did took Jesus out into the water baptized Jesus and then Jesus endued with power of the Holy Spirit began his ministry and for 40, 40 days he went in the wilderness 
And the devil threw obstacles at him. Three times came to him, told him, hey, you need to go ahead and, you know, you can just call down the angels. You can do this. You can do that. But Jesus said, no. No. But God's word proved a point about Jesus, that Jesus would be the Messiah by those three different places in the Jordan River. So after Jesus gets his ministry started, you know, he's going around, he's preaching, he's talking to people and stuff. He goes to the shores of Galilee and, and he's, he's talking to a group of people and stuff. And, you know, I'm sure it was kind of surreal for, for Jesus as well. You know, here he's talking to, to all these people and, and people just are coming to him, you know? I mean, if you think about you being, being a human and, and, you know, of course, Jesus was fully human at that time. He knew what his mission was. He knew everything that he needed to do. But, you know, it would be a little overwhelming to have all these people just, just coming around and just listening to what you had to say all the time. And so here's Peter and, and Andrew. They're they're just a little ways off the shore. They're they're with their in their boat. They've been fishing, you know, all night, and they're cleaning their nets and stuff. And Andrew, he had already heard Jesus preach once, and so he he knew a little bit about who Jesus was. But then, you know, here's his here's Peter in his boat, and a stranger comes up and says, "Hey." Can I get in your boat for a little bit? Why do you want to get in my boat for a little bit? You know, I, I just want to, I, you know, I got all these people, they can't really hear what I'm saying. The acoustics are a little bit better when I get out, when we get out on the water and it can, the sound will project a little bit more, a little bit better and all that. Peter's probably like, whatever, you know, I'm getting ready to go home, getting ready to go sleep, been up all night, haven't caught nothing. But he goes, all right. I'll, I'll let you get in my boat and just, just talk a little bit. And so, you know, that's, that's Peter's first encounter with Jesus. You know, you know, Jesus gets done talking and I'm sure, I'm sure that, that Peter was, was pretty skeptical about, about anything and everything. But, you know, they got done and Jesus is like, well, are we going to go fishing or what? <laughs> I'm sure Peter's like, dude, we've been fishing all night. We didn't catch anything. Yeah. I'm sure Jesus is like, huh, okay. I thought maybe we'd go fishing, go hang out for a little bit, you know? That's who Jesus was. I mean, he hung out with, you know, all the people and did all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, you know, maybe Jesus had been fishing before. Maybe he had never been fishing. He wanted to go fishing. I don't know. I'm sure Peter's like, no, I ain't gonna take you fishing. I mean, it's met. Why you th dude, there ain't no fish out here. It's daytime. We fish at night. I'm sure Jesus was, let's just go. I'm sure Andrew had, had seen a little of something that, that, that Jesus had done before. And he's like, come on, Peter, let's just, let's just try it and see what he's gonna do. I'm sure that they pushed out a little ways. I can, I can picture it. And, you know, Jesus is like, hey, throw your net here. Dude, there ain't no fish here. Yeah, just trust me. Just throw your nets out there. Threw their nets out. What happened? Overabundance of fish just jumped in their, in their boat. Not jumped in their boat, but they had it in their nets. You know, an overabundance that the sons of Zebedee had to come over and help them get them in the boat. And then the boat started to sink because they had too many fish in it. You know, there's one one place I was reading where it said they had over 150 fish in their boat. Now, if they, each of those fish is five pounds or 10 pounds, I'm sure they're probably pretty big fish. That's a lot of weight to be in a little boat. And if you've seen the boats from the Old or the New Testament time, they're not that big. And so I'm sure that there was there was that much much stuff. But you know, that was the first encounter that the disciples began to have with Jesus. Think about your first encounter with Jesus. What did Jesus do in your life the first time you encountered him? How did you feel? 
What happened in your heart? Were you skeptical? Did you expect him to do anything? Did he do something in your life? You know, but once Jesus got into Peter's boat, what happened? He did something. And he probably did something in your life too when Jesus got into your boat at that time. You know, later on we, we see in the in the story stories of, of Jesus where you know Jesus you know asked to get into the boat, but then we see that Jesus tells his disciples, he says, he says, you know, just just go out a little. I, I'll catch up with you guys. You know, he just got done preaching to five thousand plus people. They just fed the the with all the loaves and the fishes, like Robert was saying earlier. And Jesus is like, hey, I'll catch up with you in a little bit. Knowing full well that they're going out to get in the, in the boat, to go out to the middle of the, get into the middle of the sea, how's Jesus going to get to where they're going? You know, a couple of references says that he was two to three to, to four kilometers away from where they were at. You know, so here's Jesus. Now he's gonna he's gonna walk all the way down, then catch the boat. Oh wait, the boat left already. Hmm. So, you know, disciples are probably out there in the boat, and they're going, "Hey, where's Jesus at?" <laughs> Then a storm comes up. A couple of times we read about where a storm came up. How many of you in your lives, a storm has come up? Was Jesus in your boat then? Or was Jesus not in your boat? What kind of, what kind of experience did you have with Jesus at that time? You know, I, I think about, you know, when Jesus is in the boat with, with the, with all of them and the storm comes up, Jesus is sleeping. You know, um, how many of us when a storm comes up in our lives, are we sleeping? Probably not. We experience that fear, that, that turmoil in our hearts, in our lives. You know, we, we begin to act like little babies, like we're scared. You know, I'm just, probably disciples. I can see Peter now just screaming like a girl going, hey, Jesus, uh, I'm getting ready to get thrown into the water. You know, the boat's getting ready to sink. They're getting ready to do this. They're getting ready to do that. And here they just saw him, tell, saw Jesus supply all the fish they needed to pay off all their debts and all that other stuff. I can see Jesus waking up and looking at him, rolling his eyes and saying, really, guys? Did you not just see what I just did? And say, say to the storm, calm, peace. You know, how many times in our lives have, have we not done that with Jesus, with us? Instead of saying and whining and complaining and, and griping and doing everything in our power to try to fix things ourselves, have we just finally whined enough that we said, okay, fine, Jesus, help me. I mean, how many times have we done that? Lots. I know I have, you know? But so many times it's like that. So, you know, when Jesus isn't in our boat, like I was talking about the 5,000, you know, he's feeding the 5,000 and then Jesus, you know, told him to leave. He went down. Now, did Jesus get run down there to him? Did he get transported down to the, to the ocean? Did he, you know, what did he do? How, how far out were they? Where were they at? What was, what was going on in that, that whole situation where they were at, you know? Here comes Jesus walking on the water out to the boat. Storms raging, things are going on all around them. 
Same thing in our life when Jesus isn't around, we start, things start happening to us. Things start transpiring that we don't know what to do. You know, I'm sure Jesus is probably, was probably like, hey, I'm coming, guys. I'll be there in a minute. But then there's Peter, who was like, dude, I'm getting out of this boat. I'm going over to him because I know that he can do something. And I'm sure his friends were probably going, hey, come back here. Don't jump out. Don't jump out of the boat. You're going to drown. You're going to die. And Peter's probably like, no, I'm not going to die. We saw what he did with the fish. We saw what he did with the last storm that we did. I'm getting out there with him because it's safer out there with him instead of being in this boat by myself with all you scaredy cats. <laughs> and so what did he do? Peter jumped out of the boat. <laughs> Sometimes in our lives, we have to take that kind of plunge. And we have to say, I'm going to get out there with Jesus in this storm because I know that he's not going to let me drown. I know he's not going to let me sink. I know he's not going to let me go astray. But whew, sometimes we don't do it. You know, there are times when we just have to say, you know what? Fine. I'm just going to do it. Because sometimes we don't. Most of the time we don't. Because we let our feelings get hurt. We let our, this happen. We let that happen. You know? We have to grow up. We have to grow up with God. We have to grow up and say, you know what, Jesus? I know that you're here. I know that you're with me. I know that I have a relationship with you. I know that your Holy Spirit's going to help me get through all this stuff. And I know, without a doubt, that you are going to do it. And we just have to take the plunge to do it. No matter how scared we are, no matter how troubled we are, no matter what happens, we just have to do it. Amen. You know, just like just like Peter, you know? I don't know if I could have done it. I mean, think about it. You're in the middle of the ocean. Think about being on a cruise ship. Anybody been on a cruise? Think about being on the ship and you're looking over, how many of you would jump off the cruise ship into the water? Not me. I mean, I wouldn't want to do it. Now, if I had seen in person, you know, the first my first encounter with Jesus and catching all the fish or him walking on the water or him calming the storm, you know, all in person, then, yeah. <laughs> but in our lives right now, you know, for us, most of the storms, most of the problems that we have isn't going to kill us. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Now, what Peter did, that could have killed him. You know, there are some things that, yes, it might, it might kill you if you do it. But if you got your trust in Jesus, guess what? He's going to be there with you. So... Here the disciples are, you know, they've been on their own for a while. Jesus dies on the cross. He raises, rises again. Peter denies him. All that stuff. And here the disciples are. Where are they at? Fishing. How many of you have ever said, you know what, forget this. I'm just going to go fishing. I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to. No, man. I'm, I'm done. And you walk away and you say, forget it. I mean, here, here are the disciples. What are the, what was it, about 40 days after the resurrection? I think it's somewhere around in that area. But here the disciples are, and I'm sure probably Peter. Peter's like, man, I denied him three times. I did this, I did that. Dude, if he does come back, he ain't going to like me none. You know? I mean, think about that. You know, Peter cut the guy's ear off. Peter denied him. You know, Peter's hiding. And here's the guy that, that's supposed to have to be, be the rock for the church. You know, the other disciples are, are around and everything. And, and here they are fishing. What are they supposed to be doing? Go out into the world and preach the gospel. Yeah. You know? That's what the disciples were supposed to be doing. You know? 
They didn't sound too motivated at that time. They're fishing. They went back to what they knew how to do. How many times in our lives do we go back to what we know how to do stuff? Why? Because we feel comfortable doing it. You know? But sometimes God wants to take us out of our comfort zone so he can use us to do more things for God. He wants to work through our weaknesses. He wants to work through the things in our lives that, that, that we don't think we can do anything. He wants to use us in that way where people can look at you and say, dude, there's something about you that's different because I never knew that you could do that. But here you are, you're doing it now. Those are the things that God wants to do in your life. Peter, Matthew, John. I mean, there was a bunch of reprobates surrounding Jesus. I mean, tax collectors. Guys that party. Guys that hung out. Guys that, did, that just fished. But here, Jesus was just was like, okay, you guys are my people. Everybody sees who you are. Now, I'm going to use my power through you to reach the world. And so, here are the disciples. They're out there. They're, they're trying to catch fish. And guess what? They're not catching anything. So Jesus, he's saying, you know, Jesus comes back from the grave and he's sitting on the shore, building the fire. He hollers out there, hey, you guys got, you got any fish? I'm kind of hungry up here, you know? Ah, oh, we ain't caught nothing all night. Hey, Jesus probably, hey, just throw, throw your net to the other side. And I'm sure again, Peter's like, who is this guy? What, what in the world is he thinking? Just because I'm going to throw it to the other side doesn't mean the fish are on that side and not on this side. What, my net scared on the way or something? What, am I shadow in the way? Is it dark? Is it, you know, you ever been fishing? You know, some of those things matter. But reluctantly, they threw them over. And what happened? They got another abundance of fish and went into shore. And there was Jesus. You know, it resulted in this miraculous catch. But the thing is, Jesus will always show up to reassure you. He will always be there when you don't think he's there. You know, Jesus will supply all we need. You know, there's no drive throughs back in the day. So he's sitting there with the fire and they had to get the fish. So now they had a fish fry on the on the on the, the banks. But you know, on more than one occasion, you know, I know the disciples forgot what Jesus had done. I'm sure they did. Even after, you know, he went after he had resurrected and he went back back to heaven, I'm sure that they still were probably like Dude, how are we going to do this? You know, I'm sure they were probably doing all that stuff. But you know what? They had the Holy Spirit there with them. You know, Jesus, they left the Holy, Jesus left the Holy Spirit with them. You know, I know this, this probably isn't a long message or whatever. But I want to ask you tonight. I just want to challenge you tonight. You know, where are you at? Where are you at in your walk with Jesus? Where are you at? Is he in your boat? Is he out of your boat? Is he across the sea and the other side over there somewhere? Do you have an obstacle in your way where you can't can't reach out to where he is? You know, maybe you're one of the guy, one of the people that says, "I'm just going to go fishing. Forget this. I'm not going to do. I'm just going fishing." You know. You know, we always return to what we we know. We always return to our stinking thinking. Our addictions, our bad relations, relationships. You know, maybe Jesus is already in your boat. Maybe you're in the middle of a storm and you don't, you didn't know if Jesus was even in your boat. But you know what? He is in your boat. Jesus is there with you. 
Jesus is always there with you in every situation. You know, maybe you need to be like Peter. Maybe tonight you need to just take a leap of faith like Peter did. Maybe God's put something on your heart that's so strong that, that you need to do it. And you just need to step out in faith and just do it. You know, see what God can do in your life. You know, what obstacle is there? Put your trust in Jesus. You know, like it says up there, it says, let us try. Because if we don't try, nothing's ever going to happen. You know, we can, we can do what we want. We can push. We can fish. We can do all that kind of cool stuff. But what happens when Jesus shows up? See, he showed up. He woke you up, didn't he? <laughs> Thanks, Robert. Appreciate that. You're the man. I know. But tonight, I just want to ask you, you know, where are you at with God? You know, what, what, what is in your way? What do you need Jesus to, to clear that obstacle with? You know, Jesus is like a combat engineer. He, he'll clear the way no matter what's there. We just have to be willing and able to do it. Yeah. You know, as an engineer, you know, we, we had to clear all kinds of obstacles. And it was scary. Trust me, it was scary. But, you know, I knew that I had the other guys around me. I knew that God was with me. But more importantly, I knew that we could get through it because we were going to try. If we never tried, we'd never, never gone anywhere. We'd have never won the battles that we won we would have never got through the obstacles that we got through. We would have never crossed the rivers that we, we, we were able to cross. Amen. None of that stuff would have mattered. Amen. So tonight, I just want everybody just to bow your heads tonight. And just, just think, about, think about your life. <laughs> think about what you want from God. Think about what you're searching for. Are you one of the ones that, that just say, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to go fishing. I, you know, I know God wants me to lead this ministry. I know God wants me to, wants me to preach. I know God wants me to go and talk to this person now, you know, that, that I see every day, but I'm just too scared to, or, you know, maybe it's, you know, God wants me to just, just come to church all the time. Or maybe God wants you to just read the Bible more. You know, I, I don't know what it is. But there's always there's always an obstacle that's going to be there. It doesn't matter what what it doesn't matter what you're going to do. It doesn't matter. It really, I mean, there's always going to be something in your way. But with Jesus, He is the way. He is the truth. He is the light. So tonight, I just you know. <laughs> think about that in your life now I'm going to open up the altars if you if you need prayer for anything or want prayer for anything we'll, we'll pray for you tonight if you're here tonight and you want to just recommit your life to God and say you know what Jesus I know you're I know you're not in my boat right now and I need you in my boat because I can't do this by myself. And it's that simple. <laughs> really, guys, it is that simple just to say, hey, Jesus, I need you in my boat. I need you in my life. I need you in my heart. Please come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. I want to be free. I want to, I, I want to get, I don't want to go fishing anymore. <laughs> I want to walk with you. And so tonight, he said, you know, feel free. Them's going to sing a little bit, maybe. And if you want to come up and, and just just for prayer or whatever, you can. 
no formal dismissal or anything tonight. Is there a men's group Saturday? There's men's group Saturday, so. But like I said, the altars are open. If you did say, Jesus, I want you in my boat, I need you in my heart, let me know. So I can I can pray for you also. But tonight, God wants to do stuff in our in our lives. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for everybody that's here. I thank you for for what you've done in this this service. I thank you for this message, Lord. Thank you for all the confirmations of this message this week. And I just pray that that you will be with each person, Lord. Each person that that is that is struggling with stuff that that you have said, you know, hey, I need you to do this, and they've kind of struggled with it a little bit. But Lord, I just pray that tonight, when they when they leave this place, when they go home, the next few days, that that you will walk into their lives and you will speak to their hearts and they will know without a shadow of a doubt that you are in what you want them to do. And you will clear each and every obstacle that comes in their way, even when there seems to be no other way. And Lord, even those that, that I mean, where it seems impossible, that you will work and you will move and you will you will just give them that that strength to to move out and do the things that you want them to do. Holy Spirit, just come into this place, just minister to us tonight. Everybody that is struggling with stuff, just begin to give them a peace. Let your peace and your love begin to just surround people. You know, just like the disciples, as they were they were sitting in the boat and the storm was raging all around them, and you stood up and, and you just said, "Hey, calm, peace," and everything just settled down. And Lord, I thank you. In your name. Amen.